Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog and welcome to the shop sounds right now. A little ASMR in here. Yeah, just bought some really high rated air fittings, quick attach ones off Amazon. They're garbage, don't buy them. That one's specifically right there, but if you're interested in the look, the functionality, and the beauty of how great those things don't function, yeah, we'll get an Amazon FBO link below. Now, I'm only kidding, guys. Look, this truck, AKA the LBZ, OBS, or the OBZ, as we've been referring to it as, is going to be the reason that Tylenol stock shoots all the way up to the moon because I'm its lead consumptor because of the headache that this thing has been. I'm gonna actually try and angle my microphone a little bit away from that airline because the guys are using it as we speak, and it's gonna do that until the compressor is empty. It's just gonna leak all the air out, and uh, we happen to run out of Teflon tape, but hopefully Amazon arrives later today. Look, this thing, I was pretty much ready to rock and roll. The only change that I had to do to it was get a sway bar on, and then I I'd be able to drive it down the road, but it decided to start doing a very specific thing that's going to drive me absolutely insane. I'm not even covering it up at this point in time. Right there, guys, do you see it? Do you see it? It's right there all over the epoxy floor. I made a mess right when I got the whole system primed up. We had talked about it the last upload. The coolant expansion tank was all plumbed up. All the lines are ready. We've got the lines going into the actual firewall so that way we can have some heat on these chilly days. Luckily, we've got some enthusiast apparel to keep us warm in the meantime, but the water pump's done, of all things. I can't even make up the fact that I have emptied and filled this coolant system at least a dozen times. I got it all ready to rock and roll. It wasn't leaking. I ran it, and then I guess I actually got it up to its capacity, and it was like, nah, dude. I don't like you. I wanted to let you guys know that Dream Diesel Giveaway number 28 is launching October 13th, which is just about one week from today, if my timing serves me correct. It happens to be right there behind the camera, and it is freaking sick. It's going to be a complete surprise. I've given small little teasers of glimpses at it in previous videos, so if you guys want to go try and catch them, good luck. They are tough, but they are there. And if you can't find them, well, be patient. It's going to be one you're not going to want to miss. And we haven't heard back as of me filming this video yet from Compliance We Take Services. We're doing this a giveaway number 27, but that should be quite literally any day now. So follow us on Instagram if you guys want to stay as up to date as possible or download our app because we're actually going to be sending that notification out. It's completely free and you'll always be the first to know no matter what. It's pretty sick. I'm super proud of it. Still, to this day. What? I take pride in what I do. Oh, before we go any further, that's got to stop. Kind of bummed, man. These things look to be pretty... Oh. I fixed it. I fixed it. I gave her a little elbow grease. It's good now, dude. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about the truck, shall we? The theme of the OBZ is the fact that there are massive mistakes made. And the mistakes are the fact that ideally in a perfect world, we would have done all this stuff while the motor was out of it. But our sole objective was to get the motor in it, not knowing that any of these things actually had to happen before we got the motor in, now making it more difficult to get the stuff out that we need to change in the motor to make it right. So the guys have the coolant out, they have the actual fan clutch assembly out itself, and they're working on pulling apart all the other stuff to get to that thing right there. We need to put the new one in because there's a weep hole in the bottom of the actual pump that starts leaking. And ours was leaking. Unfortunately, that really sucks because I had this whole system charged and it was up to 185 degrees, pretty much right where it needed to be to well, go out and start enjoying it. But that's not where the OBZ problems end. There's so many things on these old trucks that just add up over time. And as I was at the parts store for like the 350th time in the last three days, talking to the guys, getting some other miscellaneous things, he had quoted well, the last 5% of the job takes 95% of the time. And you know what? Nothing felt more accurate to me in the moment than that statement right there because this truck is 95% done, but the last 5% is literally taking forever. And it is so painful. I'm complaining at this point in time. I don't mean to complain, but all of my patience has completely worn off and I just want to go drive the damn thing. The other problem we're having is that the factory hood hardware and hinge is not going to work. On this side, I think it would be fine, but on that side, it's not going to work because the bracket that we're using for the battery actually makes contact with this as it comes down. It's kind of a long story, but with the way that the terminals are set up and the way that that bracket is reinforced down on the frame rail itself, there's some 
confliction. So I ended up going out and buying some things. The idea is we actually wanna use some of these strong arms to act as the new mechanism to hold the hood up. That way we can completely delete this thing right here. We gotta go ahead and get these MPS fasteners installed down in this ballpark somewhere as well as on the hood side itself. But the hood right now is somewhat hidden in plain sight. So these for the time being are actually going to go over here as we wait to get to that step some other time. So we'll check that one off the list. Now, as we continue to go down, we actually have to go ahead and find ourselves a sway bar to get installed in the truck because we do have sway bar drop brackets that made all the suspension change brackets for the Super Duty axles that we have up front and in the rear. Now, that brings us to the inside of the truck. You can see I've got the door panel off because in F-350 fashion or OBS fashion, the windows don't go down. Why? Because, well, I put it up on Instagram the other day. If you guys saw it, you know. If not, you know now. The window motors go bad. So I had to go on a crazy rabbit chase to try and find this thing right here. And then I also have to figure out how to get behind here to change the motor out so I can actually operate it without having to literally get here and push it up. And wouldn't you guess it, the back one is broken as well. So this door panel has to come off we have to change this one too, and then hopefully everything is operable. But I probably won't even put it together until it proves to me that it works like 10 or 15 times, so that way I know I'm good to go, and I don't have to do a bunch of rework, which has essentially been the theme of this entire project. Now let's talk about the fact that the entire dashboard is removed on this side. That brings us to the next challenge. So this was originally a gas truck that was two wheel drive. And that means it had a different gauge cluster than the one that came in the factory diesel truck, AKA the OBS 7.3 Power Stroke. So naturally I saw that the wiring connectors are the same on the back. So I found an OBS gauge cluster that says diesel fuel and turbo diesel. It's very cool. It plugged in. But now the problem is I'm trying to connect a Ford piece of hardware to Duramax wires. Now, fortunately they're all labeled as to exactly what they are, but when you connect them, nothing actually happens. Why you ask? Well, to anybody that's semi-electrically inclined in the audience, you might know that electricity talks in different languages and that's what we're gonna talk is resistance, amperage, and volts, right? It's a bunch of different mechanisms to measure the way electricity conducts. Well, if my ballparking guesstimate of no knowledge whatsoever is semi-correct, the OBS is communicating in one resistance going to the Duramax, that's another. So we need to figure out the resistance and maybe put some inline resistors so they can communicate accordingly. And then the goal is to actually tie out all of the parameters on the truck. Everything from our trans fluid temp to our coolant temperature to our battery voltage to the fuel gauge, which is already connected fortunately, because that is the one forward thing that remains, the speedometer and the tachometer, which wasn't included on the gas truck gauge cluster itself. I'm actually going to be working with a local guy by the name of Troy, who owns a company called Racewire. He actually does these standalone harnesses for, let's just say LS Fox body conversions to make those Fords way better than they originally were. Damn, the Ford boys are fired up. I mean, no disrespect. I mean, no disrespect. I love all the manufacturers. It's obviously just very fun to say that I got pretty much one of the only LBZ swap Duramaxes to ever exist. I also need to figure out how to line up these strikers. We have new strikers in, but you can see they're not that easy to open. We put the striker bolts in. I lined them up to where the factory paint was essentially scarred up, but they still don't really operate all that smooth. So that's something in the works. We also don't have a front drive shaft. That right there shouldn't be that big of a deal, but we are going to get it synced up eventually. Now, what I need to do is figure out how to create vacuum so the truck can actually be transitioned into four wheel drive because this vacuum line is what actually engages that differential. And then that brings me to the next thing. We have all these really amazing lines that do cool things. Literally, these are the coolant lines for the truck that come off the AC pump. They need to be connected into the pre-existing HVAC system, which is here, and to the ducting and internal fan, which is here. This fan is operated right here, so you can actually change where the air is going. All of that operates on vacuum, which Duramaxes don't produce. It's very simple, right? Just go out and buy the vacuum pump right here. We're gonna put this vacuum pump in. This actually came in the 7.3s and the 6.0s back in the day. It literally is just a small little compressor of sorts, and it operates on a 12 volt wire. But I would like to actually connect it with the factory harness, which I have right right here. It's just, where do we tap into that? And Troy from Racewire is actually going to be my expert to kind of help me with some of those little odds and ends electrically so we can then enjoy a very comfortable climate on the inside. Now, what do you guys think of the new look of the Denali? I'm not going to lie. It's pretty sick. It's subtle. It's clean. It's minimalistic. I'm not really ever the biggest fan of factory wheels, but that's kind of just a vibe. I appreciate it in small doses. I do miss the 14 wides because if there's anybody that does 14 wides, it's this guy right here consistently since the beginning, but I'm not even going to lie. This is one hell of a sexy work truck vibe right now. And 
and work it's been doing, and it's quite dirty, but that's just the name of the game in Pennsylvania as Hurricane Ian has been making his way through. Now, speaking of Denali's, I did just see online they finally released the first look date for the 2024 revised body style. I am so freaking excited because my initial plan was to get a new Denali when they were originally supposed to come out in 23, but the pandemic screwed all that up. I do plan on hopefully being one of the first to get one. I am not the biggest influencer in the space, nor do I ever really want to become the biggest influencer in the space. I really like my objective of quality is greater than quantity because as enthusiasts, simplicity is bliss and sometimes, boys, there's a beauty in the silver lining of less is more. So I'm hoping I can get one of the first ones kind of like I did when this body style right here debuted back in the later parts of 2019. I'm also working on trying to get one of the first high countries that will be coming out and I've got some connections that are really gonna help to make that happen. Hopefully. I'm also interested in potentially putting a down payment on the new 2023 Super Duty because although it isn't really the most beautiful baby, I think it has some potential. The good looking nature of it right out of the womb was, yes, a little bit questionable, but I'm kind of motivated to make it look really good. Hopping over real quick at Lime Ridge. If you guys don't know, I've never really actually admitted this, but I make a once weekly trip down here, whether I'm filming or not filming, just to see what my favorite truck is. And the one that specifically caught my eye this week is an oh so particular body style, and it happens to be a high country. Check out that black one right there behind us. There's something about the 2512 look that really just sets the move and brings back those vibes. Maybe because it was my first ever set of wheels on the OG Duramax that was lifted with a Cognito 4 to 6 inch. But then I'm greeted with a black L5P long bed or a really nice platinum or an AT4 or a red high country new body style. Okay, yes, the name Dirty Max Jack really holds true today, but I kind of had to make mention of that quickly because driving in there, that thing caught my eye real quick. Now, for those of you guys that don't know, we've actually got Dream Deals of Giveaway 27 hanging down here at Next Level Motorworks because that truck's gonna be going off to you potentially in the future. And we're having Tyler go through all the fluids because that big turbo kit was installed only but a few hundred miles ago. We wanna make sure she is spick and span for wherever it is that she's gonna end up and end up I'm gonna end up being very sad to see this one go. It's beautiful. It's sitting on the 24 by 12s right now, but it does have the optional 24 by 14. We did just put a post up on Enthusiast today when I'm filming this video, October 5th, 2022, asking you if you've made your final decision as to what setup you're gonna put on that truck. Have you decided yet? If not, no worries. You still have a little bit of time if you get the phone call to put that title in your name debt free boys. Thank the Lord for this man right here. He's coming through saving the day. We needed a 12.36 millimeter socket and this little doohickey right here boys and girls. We're headed back to the shop. It's crazy what happens when you have the right tool for the job. Am I right? When you're trying to make do, you just don't. It don't happen. See that thing right there? That's what we just got from Tyler. And he also is kind enough to give us our 36 spline. Now Jake's getting the torque gone. Now if we scoot on underneath, let me show you what that little tool done did. That's the tool right there. It slides up so perfectly and conveniently right into the bell housing and then grips tight so it doesn't go anywhere. So you can then go back over there to do what Jake just did. That is so freaking cool. That weep hole I was telling you guys about is right there. That starts to leak when the seals inside the actual pump itself begin to go bad and then you just need to replace the entire pump. It was weeping and I was too because we had to drain all the coolant out that I just bought. You guys notice something? Yep, yeah, it's late now. We got everything buttoned up up front, but I can't even begin to make this up. This is legitimately just the definition of my life lately with the OPZ. The new water pump is in. It's looking great. It's working great, except for the fact that the coolant expansion tank was leaking from the hose that we had set up for the time being. It is now sitting over here. Fortunately, we were able to disconnect it without spilling out all the coolant again, but my hands reek of the stuff. I wanted to try and get over to the window motors, get those changed today, and do some other things to prepare for its very big week next week, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case. This is yet again just the story of getting into fitting something into a truck that was legitimately never conceived to go in it. I'm not at all complaining, but I figured I would use this upload as a stage to just show you guys into the reality of swapping something in compared to what sometimes I feel like we see on YouTube where it's just like, hey, I have this idea, it's done, and all of a sudden it works. Well, there's a lot of time that goes in behind the scenes to actually create those moments. But it's all good. I'm so freaking excited about this truck being done and next week yes there are some very big things on the horizon not only is dream Deals giveaway 28 launching on the 13th but also this truck has a very specific date that i can't wait to introduce you guys to and lights off on the vlog for tonight boys and girls thanks as always for watching look out for the winner announcing the dream Deals giveaway number 27 hit that thumbs up and subscribe button if you haven't already and i'll see y'all in the next one